What's up everyone and welcome to phase two of our design system series when we're looking at creating a component library. Today is going to be a continuation of the previous video where we created a button component that had 240 variations to it. Today we're going to look at how we prototype this button to create the component interactions that always exist inside of it. If you didn't watch the previous video, don't worry, you've got your exercise file in the description below that already has the button ready to go. You also have a link to sign up to Figma if you've never used it before. Let's jump in. So in the file, we have these 240 buttons and we're just going to create some prototyping on top of them. The way this button is set up, we've got the primary buttons at the top, then the secondary below. Then we've got five different states for our buttons. We've got the default state, hover, focused, selected and disabled. So the disabled buttons aren't going to get any prototyping at all because if we do decide to use a disabled one, you can't really do anything in it. First interaction we're going to look at is the on hover interaction. So I'll select my default button, go into prototype and then when I hover over it, I get this little plus which will create a noodle. So I'm just going to pull that noodle down to here. So you'll see all of these things popping up. They're just showing us the different variations this button has. So it's saying when I, right now it's on click. So when I click on this one, it's going to change to this variation. And that variation is just changing the state from default to hover. So I don't want it to happen on click. I want it to happen while hovering. So I'll change that. Great. Obviously I want all of the default buttons to do this, but I'm not gonna go and do this one by one. So the trick I found, and if you found a better trick for this, please let me know in the comments because it's still a bit tedious, but is what I have. So the way I found to do this is if you click on your interaction, so you need to click on this little space between the word hover and the side of the design panel. So not clicking on this, but clicking just next to it and then copying it. So command C, then I'll select all of my default buttons over here and just pasting so that will paste that interaction but it pasted that interaction in a way that all of them connect to the first one so then you just have to go in and then move the noodles to the correct one it's it's still a bit of work but i think it is a bit quicker than just pulling it right now this is a quite a simple interaction it's just while hovering but if this interaction had any like animation to it or any timing or anything like that then this would copy that over so it does make it still a bit simpler Okay, so it's still a bit tedious, but if I zoom out, I just want to make sure that every single one of them has that line. Um, I'll just do all of this for the primary buttons, uh, just in the interest of time, and then I'll go later and do it to the secondary ones as well. So we've created that hover state. Now, what I would recommend doing is actually, I'm going to drop in a frame, so click on F and just drop in a frame over here. Then I'll take one of my buttons, so go into the assets panel, and just drop a button into here, just so I can test it out. And then if I select my frame and shift and space, I'll get my little prototyping demo over here, so I could just see that happen. So I'm hovering over it, look at that, it's changing to the hover state. So I know that that works. The next interaction we're gonna look at is while pressing. So as we said, when the user hovers over this button, it changes to this. So actually, that's the only thing they can do on the default state. The default state, you can't click on it. You can't press it. You can't do anything with it because once you hover over it, it automatically swaps to this one. So the clicking actually happens on this one. So I'm gonna select my button and drag a noodle over to here and say, not on click, but while pressing. While pressing gives that little extra bit where while you're clicking down before you let go of your mouse, it's gonna to change to this one. And when you let go of your mouse, that's gonna be the click from this one to this one. So while pressing, I've done that. Let's see that happen in my little demo. So I'm hovering, now I'm clicking and I'm not letting go of my mouse. So holding it down see receipts so while i'm holding it down you see that it changes to that one that has that lighter border around it and when i let go it obviously nothing happens because i haven't connected that yet so like before i'm going to copy this interaction click over here command c and i'll paste that to the rest and just connect the lines Lovely. So now I've got all of these arrows going down. I've got a while hovering, then a while pressing. The next interaction we're gonna look at is the classic 
on click. So again, the click happens from the focused state. So I'll select my focus state button and drag my noodle down, just on click, change to that, simple as can be. Now, instead of copying over, there is another way of doing this technically. If I select all of my buttons or all of anything really, I can drag a single noodle, which will drag multiple noodles. So if I drag a noodle from here, you see it's connecting noodles from every single button onto here, which is the same effect as copying and pasting. I still need to go and fix like the noodles to go to the correct places, but you can either copy paste or you can just drag that noodle because on click is the default interaction. It's the only one that doesn't have something on top of it. The rest will say what they are on drag while hovering or pressing, but on click kind of remains the only one that doesn't really have that. Now that I have all my clicks connected, let's have a look actually at our prototype. So I'll create this shift and space. So when I hover over my button, it gets to that hover state. Then while I'm clicking, holding down the mouse, it does get that border. And when I let go, it changes to my darker selected state. Now I can't do anything with this. Yeah, I can't go back. So what I need to do now is create a click state from my selected back to my default. If you wanted to cycle through that process again of hovering and selected, then you need to have another version of this, right? Because if I do a while hovering from selected to hover, then when I press on hover, it will just go to this. And then when I click on this, it will go to this. You can't have a click on this, go to here, or click on this, go to here. It doesn't know where it's coming from. Little asterisks now with variables and with what we can do with variables. We could have added a conditional and some sort of flag saying, if I'm coming from a selected state, when you click on me, go there. If I'm coming from a default state, just when you click on me, go there. But that's kind of an extra level that I don't think we really need. Also, a lot of times the interaction for something that's already selected is that there is no hovering or anything like that. So I would say, just let it go. But if you want to go extra, go extra. You do you, hon. So let's do that now. I'm going to go to my selected state and then just drag a noodle back to default. And it's going to be on click, go back to default. Let's see that happening. So when I go into my frame and shift space, hovering, hover, clicked, you see that little press uh, and then it went to the click state. And you can see that my mouse is now showing me that I can actually click on this. So when I click on it, it just goes back to default. And I'm happy with that. I don't need all the hovering and interactions in between. I'll go ahead and do that now. So now we have this big mess of arrows and that means that any type of variant that we use for our button. So I'm just gonna change it to let's say the pill shape and I want it to have an icon on the left. It will still work, shift and space still doing everything that it needs to do. Now you might think that because we have all these interactions set up, it means that this button isn't actually usable. So what if I wanna use this button to actually do something in my design? Everything will still be there. So let me show you that. I'm gonna create another frame over here. So I'll just duplicate this one actually, holding down option and shift. I'll delete the button and on here, I'll add a little text box that says, hello. Uh, I will actually, you know what? I will use a button on here as well. This button, I'm just gonna change it to say back and I'll change this one to say hello. So I wanna prototype it now because, right, it's nice that these buttons have component interactions. I need these buttons to actually be useful. So let me show you that. If I click on this button over here, I'm gonna prototype it. I'll add an interaction and say on click, navigate to frame number two. And I'll do the same for this one, on click, navigate to frame number one. So let's see how that works. I'm going to shift and space to play that. So when I hover over the button, I'm getting the hover interaction, right? Nothing has been interrupted. I'm pressing down with my mouse. I've gone to focus state. Now, when I let go of my mouse, what's going to happen is I'm just gonna move to a different space. Instead of the click interaction we had before, when when you click on it, it changes to that darker state. Now click has a purpose. So click is going to take me to where I need to go. And that's more important, right? So right now, let's see it work on here as well. I'm on the second frame, I hover over it, pressing down. I've got the focus state and I let go. I will be moved over. If the button had no purpose, so I'm just gonna pull in a new button over here and let's say I'll have two, I'll have three of these buttons and I'll change the labels to one, two, and three. Now in here, because these buttons are going nowhere, when I click on them, they are just gonna 
you know, change backwards and forwards between the different states of the button, but they're not going to send me anywhere. So if they send me anywhere, everything else is working, but they're kind of missing out that click state. And if I don't have them going anywhere, then the click state is just going to be changing between the different states of the button. So it's the best of both worlds. And that was it. Super, super quick very very impactful so useful this is something that just makes your designs really pop and makes them feel super realistic because these are things people expect it's in our mental models we expect to see a change when it's selected so it takes no time at all and it really makes everything just pop i hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe in the next video we're going to be making our next component which is going to be an input component you know we can type into it which is super useful and very necessary in every design system Leave a comment below, let me know how you're getting on. See you at the next one.